Hello, this is Breakfast with John Kay and Naga Monchetti. More turmoil over Europe for the Conservatives. Now, Tory Grundy, Lord Howe accuses David Cameron of losing control of the party. <laughs> Hello there, good morning. It's Sunday the 19th of May. Also to come, the Bank of England warns about the dangers of a government plan to boost the housing market. A total eclipse from the start. Another disappointing night for Britain and Bonnie as the Danes storm to Eurovision glory. On top of the world, we're going to go to Everest as one man takes on the challenge to raise a million pounds for comic relief. In sport, it was all a bit too much for David Beckham. Tears from the former England captain as he plays what's expected to be his last match before retirement. And Nina has the weather. Hi, Nina. After yesterday's heavy rain in the north, for most it is going to be a dry day. And although it's quite cloudy, we'll start to see some sunshine breaking through for this afternoon. Let's get to our main story. David Cameron is losing control of the Conservative Party over the issue of Europe. This according to former Chancellor of the Exchequer, Lord Howe. His writing in today's Observer, he warns that if a proposed referendum leads to Britain leaving the EU, the country would lose influence around the world. And in a few minutes' time, we're going to be asking our political correspondent, Robin Brunt, how these latest comments from Lord Howe uh, are going to affect the Conservative Party over the next few weeks. That's in about ten minutes' time. The Governor of the Bank of England, Sir Mervyn King, has issued a warning about the Chancellor's idea to boost the housing market. Yes, he's told Sky News that help to buy scheme is too close for comfort to a general state guarantee for mortgages and should not continue indefinitely. Uh, the government says that the plan announced by George Osborne back in March will run for the next three years. Well, the government faces further attack from head teachers today as union leaders urge them to ditch the new curriculum. Yesterday, the Education Secretary, Michael Gove, was heckled and cheered while addressing the annual conference in Birmingham. David Beckham has said a tearful goodbye to professional football last night as he was given a standing ovation in what's likely to be his last game. But you never know. Mm -hmm. uh, in honour of his retirement after 22 years, he was made captain for his final home match of the season at Paris Saint-Germain. Uh, this report does contain some flash photography. Good job they didn't do that before he finished playing, isn't it? It's quite dangerous. <laughs> uh, the bookies' favourite, Denmark, swept to victory at last night's Eurovision Song Contest, leaving Britain's Bonnie Tyler limping in at number 19. It was still quite a night in Malmo, though, with crazy costumes, dodgy dance routines. That was just the audience. <laughs> The 58th Eurovision Song Contest here in Malmö belonged to the Nordic countries in many ways. Denmark stormed the scoreboard with the instant catchiness of a song called Only Teardrops, which was the clear winner. Norway and Iceland collected a respectable number of points, and five times previous winner Sweden hosted with the assurance and self-mocking humour characteristic of a country many here are calling the spiritual home of this contest. Azerbaijan came second, Ukraine third. There seemed to be less political voting than usual. Russia, for example, gave lots of points to Belgium and to Greece. Paired down ballads by soloists singing about the pain of love and existence generally seemed to strike the right tone for the voting audience this year. Hungary's entry was a decidedly downbeat love song. Italy's, also finishing in the top half, was about the world falling into pieces. The UK's Bonnie Tyler said herself that she gave it some welly but her performance of Believe in Me wasn't enough to infuse Europe's voters into placing her any higher than 19th. She did get a relatively respectable 23 points, though. Other entrants intimidated the audience into submission. Norway's singer came fourth with stage presence to fill the stadium, and she appeared to be on a sadomasochistic kick. Kiss me, she said. I don't care if it hurts. 
Denmark will take the economic pain of hosting the world's biggest non-sporting TV event next year, which is likely to move all of half an hour away over the bridge to Copenhagen. Paul Henley, BBC News. All over for another year. Shame. <laughs> uh, a rare electric guitar played by John Lennon and George Harrison at the height of the Beatles' fame has sold at auction for £269,000. The Vox custom-built guitar was made especially for John Lennon in 1966 and it was used during the band's magical mystery tour period. The instrument raised about £60,000 more than expected when it went on sale in New York yesterday afternoon. The time is 12 minutes past six. Nina will have the weather for us in about five minutes' time. 20 years ago, the Conservatives were divided over Europe, and the issue is still having an impact on the party today. Writing in the Observer newspaper, Tory Grandy, Lord Howe, says David Cameron is losing control of his party. Yeah, there's the article uh, in the Observer. The headline, Lord Howe, Tory party is out of control over Europe. Uh, it says here that he says the Conservative leadership in effect, running scared of its own backbenchers. Uh, let's talk more about that. Our political correspondent, Robin Brandt, joins us now from uh, our studio. Let's take a look at this morning's papers. We already mentioned the observer of Lord Howe saying the Tory parties were out of control, yeah. as, he, as he said. Let's take a look at the Sunday Times, though. Um, you, you will remember that um, Angelina Jolie um, said earlier this week that she had had elected to have a mastectomy after it was found that she carried the BRCA1 gene, um, putting her at a, up to 87% um, risk of breast cancer. Well, a 53-year-old Londoner has become the first man in the world to have his prostate removed after discovering that he's carrying a faulty gene, putting him at increased risk of developing cancer. The picture you're seeing there, Jessica Ennis. She got married yesterday to her childhood sweetheart, Andy Hill. Doesn't she look lovely? She does, she does. Um, if, it's, uh, if it's not Lord Howe, it's the Tory backbenchers and uh, grassroots making uh, the news. Let me show you several of the papers. They're leading with Tory splits. You've got uh, the Independent saying the Prime Minister's gone to war uh, with the press over the loon slur. That was that uh, swivel-eyed loon storm engulfs the Prime Minister on the Mail on Sunday and the Sunday Telegraph again. Uh, this swivel-eyed loon. This was uh, supposedly a comment that was made by a senior Downing Street aid to David Cameron, but uh, so far uh, everybody's denied ever saying it. Other newspapers also focusing on the search that continues for missing um, girl Madeleine McCann. Time now, 16 minutes past six. You're watching Breakfast from BBC News. Here are the main stories. It's been a bit wet, soggy, uninspiring, but Nina's going to change all that for us. <laughs> Hi, Nina. Hi. You did bring a little bit of sunshine, Nina. 22 degrees in Glasgow, that's good stuff. Yes. We'll see you soon. For about 22 seconds as well. Uh, we're going to be back with the headlines at 6.30, but now on breakfast, it's time for Newswatch. Samira Ahmed questions the head of the BBC newsroom, Mary Hockaday, about the corporation's coverage of the conviction of seven men for child sexual exploitation in Oxford.